What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Mike Check Podcast. This is T-Word, the People's Champ. Thanks for tapping in. Today, we're talking about Terrence Crawford, and we're going to react to his media workout, which was held on Wednesday. But before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate that feedback. All right, guys. So on Wednesday, Terrence Crawford did his media workout on uh, the PBC and Showtime streams on YouTube. And he did a press conference prior to. He answered a few questions from the media. And then he went into the ring and into the gym and did some basically some some workout for show. Nothing too crazy. Uh, you know, the mitts, shadow boxing, et cetera. He did some jump rope, things of that nature. Uh, just kind of, you know, showing off what kind of shape he's in. These media workouts don't tell you anything because, you know, for a fact, these fighters are not showing any specific strategy within this particular workout. Um, but I did pick up on a little something. Uh, but before we get into that, I do want to address the press conference. And they were in what looks like the UFC facility in Vegas. And a lot of questions were directed towards Terrence Crawford and MMA fighters or UFC fighters and little things like that, as if they're asking like, well, depending on how this goes, are you going to go to UFC? Or it just seemed weird that this is a mega fight and he's got his best opponent ever going to be on the other side of the ring. And they want to talk about people that's not even boxers. And then even when as far as asking him a question about Francis Ngannou and Tyson Fury and what chance he gave Ngannou. And he is very clear, dry, blunt, and to the fact, zero. He gives him zero chance to beat Tyson Fury. And I tend to agree with that. You have a career boxer who's probably the best heavyweight in the last 15 years against a guy who's never been a professional boxer. It doesn't matter how big he is. Fury has withstood the biggest puncher in boxing in probably last 20 years. And he's the last man standing in that situation three times. So, well, two times and a half. Um, so I tend to agree with Terrence Crawford there. But anyway, I just thought that that was odd that they were asking those questions. But other questions they talked about, you know, how do you feel going into the fight? Was there anything particular about Arrow that he felt like could be exploited? And different questions that you know these guys are not going to answer. He's not going to give you strategy. So I don't know why these questions go there. And even if you look in the comments on the stream on uh, the Showtime side, because I didn't watch the PBC one, um, a lot of people are saying it's the same old boring questions. And I get that that's why some of those UFC questions came out so people wouldn't just be you know, wash, rinse, repeat, but it's, it essentially was, it either was a dumbass question or a question that we've heard a million times that we've already heard the answer to. So the workout was kind of just seeing, uh, you could definitely see, he looked like he had bulked up a little bit, maybe about three weeks ago, you know, he was just packing on a little bit of extra and you should, when you're facing a, um, a volume puncher, you want to be a little bit extra fortified, but you could see the weight cut starting to kick in. You could see the leanness started to kick in the the physique that Terrence Crawford likes to come to the ring as he's not a he's not a bulky guy he's a wiry as they say a wiry guy and you could see that that was starting to take shape and he's about 10 days out so that's good news he's gonna make 147 super comfortable and then he'll be able to maybe balloon back up to maybe 155 heading to the ring I don't think he'll get much bigger than that but Bud looks in great shape um, his hands look good. You know, the, the speed is there. Um, I could see a little bit of footwork when he was doing some little turns and pivots, but everybody looked fast when you work in the noodles with Bomac, you know, but something I noticed about that, and then we're going to close here. They were doing a noodle drill and Crawford was in his stance and Bomac was working from a southpaw stance. So he was slipping and dodging southpaw jabs, southpaw lead hand slipping rolling turning working against the southpaw and if i'm not mistaken i saw him at orthodox a lot and we know that orthodox is the position that he uses to kind of um consume the information process the information and then once he's found exactly what he's looking for he switches to southpaw i don't like downloading data because if you understand what downloading means that doesn't make sense he's consuming and processing he's looking at it and then he's turning it into something at the same time it's all happening all at one time he's not just downloading information he's taking it and he's turning it into something else it's processing and then he executes based on what he's processed so let's try to fix that y'all but anyway i did notice that he's really been prepping because i saw the head movement i saw 
how decisive he was about getting out of the way, how he wanted to pivot off it, how he wanted to step to the side, step around it, things like that. So typically they don't give stuff away in these little workouts, but he definitely showed what he's going to be doing against that jab. So we're going to see how it plays out in the fight. But let me know what you guys think. Did you watch the media workout? Do you care about that sort of thing? And was there anything that you picked up during the workout that might be of note? So this has been T for the Mic Check Podcast. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until the next time I'm out, peace.